What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the red color playing as Odin. His name is the Rapple. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Matrius. He is Poseidon. And I said that in the right order. You'll understand that Poseidon is actually Matrius and Matrius is actually Poseidon. So that's just how it is. And those are the rules. That's, that's the way that uh, mythology works, right? Um, people tell lies and then they stick. Onwards and upwards. I want to talk already about this early game because I feel like people don't get it. On Midgard. Not everyone. There's a lot of players who are starting to get it. And the more I say it, the more people get it. Defender's advantage on water is really, really strong. That doesn't mean that you can't win a water map. It just means that your focus shouldn't be on winning water. Your focus, if you want to do damage on water, should be raiding water while doing other stuff. That's what makes Age of Mythology's naval combat better than what you think. A lot of players are like, I win water. I, I, I'm, I get to... I, I, I'm beating him. I should be able to win water. I should be able to win, but I can't kill him. He's just like, just hangs on a little bit. You don't do this. You don't try and kill him. You just kill off the fishing ships and you leave. Or you force the fishing ships to garrison and then you leave and you do something else and you have fun somewhere else in the game. Um, which is why water is fun. It's just good because it's not a straight I win. It's like you can't necessarily just straight win. So if that's the case... And you can't straight, this isn't 100% the case. There are ways in which you can utilize land and water to crush water. But if it's the case that you cannot win water, this means that you must boom on water because you can't win water. Make sense? So in order to be even with your opponent, you should be getting as much economy as you possibly can out of, uh, out of the early game. So... If that's the case, and logically we follow all the conclusions we should, then the answer should be we need to get 18 fishing ship at the very bare minimum before we start thinking about which strategy what we want to do. So, 18 fishing ship is the starting point. Just like every other map, every other map, your starting point is you need to make some villages. Yeah, you can choose how many villages you want to make, it's a little bit restrictive on water maps on Midgard and on Anatolia. It's different on other water maps like Mediterranean where you want to get nine fishing ship. But the, the order is there. The point is, once you get those, then you can pick what strategy you want to do. So let's go through what these players are going to do after they've got their fishing ships out uh, and what sort of options you can go for. So option number one, options, the one that is the most fun for me is a classical age all in. So the idea of a classical age all in is that your opponent is most likely going to build a handful of ships and come sit on your fishing ships and make life difficult for you. Or they might just allow you to do the same thing and they're also going to try and go all in on land. But either way, your plan is to make a ton of military buildings and spam all of that early food you got out and try and overwhelm your opponent. So that's number one. So you can go with with Poseidon, you can go Ares, you can go Hermes, doesn't really matter. With with um with Odin, you can just go like mass Ulfsark, mass raiding cavalry, some sort of mixture of that with a ton of longhouses and just have like a super hyper accelerated early game and live the dream where that's concerned. Uh, beyond that, other strategies you can try is we are actually seeing Matrix doing something slightly different here, but other strategies you can try is you can do like a semi-fast heroic, which is effectively you um you you build a handful of ships, but you put a whole bunch of villages onto gold when you get into the when you're in the next age. So we are seeing Matrix advancing. He's actually got only 12 fishing ships while he's advancing, but I imagine he's gonna continue building fishing ships up here if he has the resources for it, getting all the way up, no problems there. Uh, but you can go for this semi-fast heroic with a couple of fishing with a couple of uh, triremes. That's fine. That works. Next build order, is, and, and if you go for semi-fast heroic, you can then just decide to build units or, or whatever. Then beyond that, you can go for a mythic age. You can do whatever you want there, uh, and then or the other option is to grab a really fast second town center, uh, which can work. I have seen it work. Personally, I feel like it's not the best. I think you can actually squeeze that town center out as Norse. 
but without with the other civilizations, I don't feel like it's I feel like it slows you down too much to grab that one. Any like as like a delayed second town center. If it's part of your strategy, then it is. But we'll see how it goes. Tilbuin as Rappel. Yo. How's he going? He's got himself 15 fishing ships out, so a little bit on the light side. A um, little bit based on if his build order. Oh no, he's coming Yo. over here with these ones. This might be his 18th fishing ship. So he is getting up. He's going to be going up for uh, a 510, so not so far behind the Hermes. Like I said, defender's advantage. He's just going to have to get out some ships here. Matrius here. He is getting himself trireme. A little bit housed, though, as his house is coming down. Now the armory up or the economic upgrades got some stuff. Hand axe, pickaxe, fishing ships coming through. Freya comes down, and Rappel will get himself purse seen, and he should start making some dudes. But it looks like he's dropped a longhouse here, which is maybe a little bit greedy because he doesn't need to. Uh, he gets the Ravens, gets the Valkyrie to scout around and see what's happening, but he really should be making some longboats here just to defend this. Especially because he should be seeing with those ravens what's coming for him as the first trireme well, or two triremes are already on the way. So Apple is going to be in a little bit of a, a problem here as the boats come through. Yo, yo. The fishing ships drop back into this dock here. Mattress, on the other hand, I don't see any buildings up for Mattress. He's scouting around with the Katoska boss. He hasn't spotted the buildings up just yet. We do see the Theseus is in here. He's going to be looking for some sort of a forest fire. There are no buildings on top of the wood line here. As the longboat is out, there are two triremes over here. Rappel is just going to be playing defensive. Don't need to win the water, just need to hold on to the water. Do see him getting attacked over on this bottom side, but nice marker there from Rappel. Garrisoning three fishing ships. It's completely fine here in this situation because guess what? Matrius does not have per seam. So at 18 fishing ships, Rappel is probably more like at 24 fishing ships compared to what Matrius at 23 or something like that. A couple of fishing ships are getting taken out as Rappel comes over here with his longboats to defend. Nice micro by Matrius. Rappel is going to be easily micro in this one as some units now moving in onto this position. Rappel. What's he looking like? He doesn't actually know where to attack here. He should realize it's all on the other side because he's scouted the bottom side, but a uh, little bit of brain power required to come up with that one there. Nice marker here from Mattress. Mattress will be able to... Oh, sorry, Mattress will not be able to win this fight now that the longboat is out. And Rappel has defended this nicely as some more units coming through. Let's see how this raid is going to look as the units are pushing in to Matrius's base over here. Matrius still doesn't have any buildings up. He's got himself watchtowers just playing nice and defensive where that's concerned. The longboat's over here going to take out these trireme. No problems. Matrius has to pull back and as Matrius is working out. Rappel has defended nicely here. And Matrius is going to have to go back to the drawing board here because Rappel, he's just going to get further and further ahead in terms of food here in this game. As the units, they can't get in here. I think maybe Rappel sh probably shouldn't have uh, put so much pressure on with these units. But we see the armory coming down. Rappel might be able to advance here. He's still making some military units. No, not really. He stopped military production. No armory up, though. So he's going to be a little bit behind the eight ball. Now, one thing I do really like with uh, with Norse, if you have access to Njord, is to go Njord on this map. Because while Skadi is really good, Njord gets access to the Kraken, which can allow you to win water very easily because the Kraken is ne next to undefendable. Um, so you can do that. But then also the Poseidon has got access to the Skylar. But then you can also go Tia and have access to the Yorm and Elva and then find some victories where that's concerned. It's the Armory coming down onto this position. Matrius finding some nice attacks over here as the Centaur getting pushed back. Matrius here now going Dionysus. No surprises there. Stables coming down as well as the Military Academy. Now, one thing that I want to see from Matrius is a waypoint over here or a waypoint over here, or a waypoint, yeah, one of those two positions. Why? Because getting those heads on that Hydra at this point is really, really strong. You get three heads, four heads, that Hydra is brutal. We just see the Pegasus. I love a Pegasus. Yes, Matrius. Armory up, house is coming down, long house is coming down. Scardi is the god of choice, so no Njord here. A little bit sad, but I mean, it's not really in the game plan here for Rappel. If he went for more of a, instead of the, the units, went for more of a semi-fast heroic, uh, instead of like a units and then heroic age, he would have been in the heroic age at like seven or eight minutes. And then he would have been able to utilize some uh, some crazy uh, aggressive potential here as we are seeing this town center attempting to get grabbed here. And where is Matrius's Skylar going? Yes. Yes, he's going. Let, no, no. Oh, he was so going over there. Just, just click, click, come over. Just, 
just i i guess it's useful over here it's fine i'm not unhappy it's being used but imagine just wait just wait on it get the heads out first and then come back with the drain i mean rapple does have a frost giant coming so it's not going to be that big of a problem but Anyways, we see the units coming through. The Iron Center attempting to come up here for Rapple. He will have to pull off of this one. He does have the Ursa here, but it's going to get sniped down as this uh, Hydra might want to consider attacking some uh, some of these Ulsucks. If he can kill the Ulsuck, yes, there's a head. No head, almost. Every killing blow the Hydra gets is uh, is an opportunity. As the Center coming down onto this position, getting some raids happening. We see the Trireme coming through here as well as Matthews is trying to cause as much pressure onto his opponent as he possibly can here. As we do see a Frost... That's such a desperation frost there from Rappel. You hate to see it. Rappel wanted the aggressive town center. He could have gone for the defensive town center. Probably got it up without a frost, but he wanted the aggressive town center. So he has to cast frost. I think it's going to be a little bit challenging for him now. As you see all, all these villagers getting taken down. Nice play there. These uh, longboats have dealt with this. We see near the player actually going for... Oh, we do see arrow ship cladding coming through now for Matrius. Rappel on the other end. No arrow ship cladding here just yet as the longhouse coming down we see the units coming down onto this position the uh, longboats will win this fight hard though as rap as matrius is not fighting here he just walked through and didn't attack at all no arrow ship cladding either so these longboats just straight win against the triremes in this fight as matrius does fall victim to a little bit of a of a of a missed movement there as the units popping out over here we'll see if that frost giant can click onto the, uh, the Hydra or not, as it's going to be retreating away. All those units looking like they're getting picked off. Rappel going to be in a relatively decent position here on two town centers. Continuing along here, we do see the Skylar is out. Going to start getting some damage done onto the longboats. Fishing ships here do not have their upgrade there. It's coming through Salt and Fora. Matrius, on the other hand, he does have himself his own upgrade, but... No Salt Zone 4 just yet, as the Forest Fire getting dropped down onto this position as the Paspis starting to come down to counter those old suck. Once you see the Paspis come out, you really have to reevaluate the units that you can build. Because the Paspis are so strong against Norse. You have a, several different uh, several different uh, choices here as Norse against the Paspis. You can go mass raining cavalry. You can uh, try and just sit back, wait for the Mythic Age. You can get to the Mythic Age, make Baluster and slow push. Um, or you can try and make uh, throwing axemen work. As uh, longboats pushing through here. And the heavy triremes are actually in now, so Mattress should be able to defend this one. Meanwhile, over here, the uh, Scala has gotten itself two heads, only 207 HP remaining. These fishing ships here are not going to be long for this world if Mattress' uh, attack moved, but he did not. He's going to walk straight past those, or swim, row, row straight past those. As the uh, Apaspis coming in onto this position, this unupgraded uh, raiding cavalry definitely need a little bit more help. I mean, you can also make Yarls as well against the uh, against the Apaspis as another option. The match is now going up through Artemis Rappel, a little bit behind the eight ball here. So it's going to be interesting which... Oh, he's gone three town centers, that's why. But he's got his market up. He's going to be able to advance very soon. It'll be interesting which town center he decides to advance through. Like, funnily enough, the probably the best one would be this town center. It's the least likely to get earthquaked, and Rappel knows it. This is the least likely town center to get earthquaked. This one could get earthquaked because it's the home one, going to pick up a bunch of houses. This one could get taken down because it's the Ford one, and Matrius wants that back or wants to take that away from uh, Rappel. The back one doesn't make a whole lot of sense but the Ulsuck, they do spot this uh, gold mining operation over here as Matthew is going to come forward for, to defend with his Apaspis. Rappel not going to be able to get too much done here. Uh, maybe some ghost buildings or something could be an option to keep his Ulsuck in there and get some good damage done. Meanwhile, we do see the Raven spotting this gold mine getting grabbed over here as well. As the units coming through, we do have the Yarls in for Rappel. Rappel full population in a decent position. We'll try and put some buildings over onto this town center. That's just saying, I don't really need a town center just yet. I'm going to be utilizing the extra resources to try and find uh, an advantage. The Trireme getting some good raids in. This is where this is where Matrius really really shines against most players. He's got the he's got such good multitasking. He can come in, he can just pick off long, uh, fishing ships all game, and it's like always a value. As we do see, there's the uh, there's the earthquake hitting this town center. We'll kill off all the buildings, kill off the town center. Nice play there from Matrius, leveling the town center differential as the units trying to push in onto this position. We do see the Chimera coming in. There is the Frost Giant. Over over here trying to being ready to take that one out but the hypaspis they are all out now for matrius 
That's that Frost Giant treating away. And these Tri-Rams going to try and take down these docks, but this now puts Rapple in a bit of a pressure position because he's lost, lost all of his food income because he hasn't defended his, his water. Now, he does get himself Yorman Elvis, so that's going to be enough to defend here for the time being. There's the Fimble Winter, and he's got tons of favor in the bank. The question right now is, do you go all in on these Frost Giants, or do you make a ton of Fenris Wolves? Now, the uh, Chimera says, I'm going to kill off these guys, so you've got to have to have some sort of a defense against this. Now, we are seeing the Hursa coming through here. We are seeing the uh, Frost Giant coming in here as well. And as these villages will be falling relatively quickly, we'll see if Matrius pays attention over here or not. Looks like he is retreating away from that one. A little bit of path blocking action might come through here. It looks like Rappel is still building Frost Giants, so he doesn't want to make the Fenris Wolves, even though he has so much favor in the bank and lots of gold. Uh, wants the Frost Giants to try and deal with those Chimera. Uh, ironically, maybe not ironically, but I think that the Fenris Wolves would just be straight better here because they can chase down those Chimera with the speed boost. And you're not going to have to deal with anything as we do see these uh, these Trireme are here. Where's this Yorman Elvis? Come back. Kill this off. The dwarves are trading back. Ooh. Bit of, a, bit of a fire breath coming in. Oh, so many dead villagers there as Rappel needs to pull away from this position. Otherwise, he's going to lose a lot of villagers. There's so many low vill HP villagers here. The Frost Giants currently sitting idle. We do see some Olsarks retreating back over here as this Town Center does get up for Rappel. He's, he's somehow managing to stay relatively alive here, but these villagers, they're sitting idle. Where's the Frost Giants? Where are your Frost Giants? Get them over here. As the Chimera are going to move on to this position, there's lots of low HP units here. This Yorman Elva looking like it will eventually fall here. The Trireme do not have any upgrades. Uh, well, not the up. What's it called? Legendary? No, that doesn't sound right. What's it called? I oh, forget. I forget these things. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a Greek upgrade. Not that one. Heroic Fleet. Heroic Fleet. There's no Heroic Fleet. It's a good upgrade if your opponent's making a lot of those Myth units on water. We see uh, Matrius seeing a very, very weak position over here. Wants to attack it, but while this is going on, we are seeing some cheeky raids there onto Matrius' gold mine. This gold mine over here has still got 3,000 gold left in it, but this is a very low gold mine uh, mid guard. So it's only three large gold mines a player. One, two, three, one, two, three. So you will have to think about a trade route somewhere here. Otherwise, both players will just run out of gold and the game will be over. We do see the Yorman Elva is out here by uh, Rappel to defend over here. He's going to have to rebuild his fishing ships. It's always worth it to do this. If you end up losing the, the ships, just rebuild your fishing ships once you've dealt with the raids. Because your opponent, they, they're not going to have the population to keep raiding you and you want to get that economy back. So while Rappel does have 27 villages on food right now, he is eating the, the hunt over here. He wants to be a little bit careful with this because Patrius will send over militia and just be annoying uh, as the Ulsark. Coming back in over here, he's got to get that Frost Giant to target down the, uh, the Chimera here. He's going to pick off a couple of these other units. We'll see how he's going to go. The Chimera coming through, and he does get clicked there. Gets frozen, and Matrius clicks a ceasefire, but Rappel too smart. He's getting the Town Center. Matrius will not have that Town Center there. What re- Well, Jeepers, what's, what can- That ceasefire had to have been a misclick, right? Rappel, Rappel's now four town centers. He's getting himself fortified town centers. And Matrius has got no god powers. So he's got a, he's got bronze left. He does have bronze left. So that might be... Build, build the town center? Hello? But yeah, so Matrius does have bronze left, but he's low population. He is making Chimera. He doesn't have fortified town centers yet. So he, he does have a little bit of extra population he can get. But Rappel is going to go up to four town centers here. He's going to have the gold over here, which you probably should throw walls down on, just because like one Chimera can be a little bit annoying. There is a Frost Giant sitting there. That's going to be fine. But I guess like, Mattress is just in a, in a bit of a difficult position here. So let's see what's going to happen. Rappel trying not to fall victim to the classic Norse uh, Norse problem of not having enough military buildings here. He's, he's, got, he's got a handful, but really not many. Uh, as the unit's going to look to come in onto this position, the Prometheus, oh, not the Prometheus, the Polyphemus, is going to be really, really strong here to take down all these units as Champion Infantry does come through. The uh, Chimera trying to sneak in onto this position. Nice little uh, attack there from Matrius as 
the bronze does get cast down and try and push in over here. We see the militia attacking these villages. You've got to turn around and shank that down, surely. As these Trireme are continuing to take down fishing ships, the Ormanella is back here, helping defend as the Frost Giant's coming through. You're going to try and get onto the Chimera. You just need one Frost Giant here to have a special ability and get in onto this one, as that's exactly what's going to happen. Boom, frozen Chimera. The rest should be able to hold on here as Rappel's sitting 155-180 population. So if, if, uh, if Matrius wins this fight, though, this is going to be... Uh, nightmare for, for Rappel because he's got no gold left. His gold villages over here are being picked off. These villages here could jump onto the gold mine, but this is a really, really strong push here from Matrius. As Matrius is still sitting 130 or 130 population, the uh, the Chimera was not actually did not actually end up dying, even though it got frozen. Didn't end up dying. And now Matrius is going to have some room to cause more chaos in this game. As it looks to me that all of those... Uh, Triremes have been taken out. The Yorman Elver is going to be on on the hunt now. To pick off some fishing ships and everything else. The Dwarves have been pulled back. They will move over onto this gold mine. Most likely is there. We finally see Rappel noticing this here. He's going to uh, take out the militia and see what he's going to do. Now Rappel retreats back. And now, basically, now we see Champion to pass this out. Rappel really needs to sort out Oh. Really needs to sort out what his uh, what his plan is here to hold because Hapaspis, they they're just simply strong and he's he's got the wrong upgrades to deal with. I mean, it's like champion uh, raiding cavalry here, but he's holding on now and he can sack a town center if he really wants to get uh get sorted and then and then get into that big big ball of baluster that we talk about all the time to try and try and hold on. But we'll see how it's all going to go as Matrius does lose his Polyphemus. Matrius got a lot of resources left in the bank. There is a win condition here for Apple in this gold mine as well, which which we haven't really talked about. I guess in this gold mine, he needs to make sure he eats that. But the, the Chimera going over here as well. The raid is just continuing to happen. What makes this map so good is that nobody walls because there's no time to wall. You're just fighting the entire game. You forget that you can wall. And I say this from um, my own experience is that you forget to wall because you just do. As the uh, Chimera picks off so many villages there, Rappel in a very difficult position. He's lost villages on the top, he lost villages on the bottom, and he is trying to hold on. He's making the champion throwing action, which do decently against the Hapaspis. The problem is that they overkill Hapaspis. So they lose a lot of DPS when when they get when they get finished off there. But now uh, Matrius is changing things up, getting himself Heliopoli and trying to think about pushing in onto this position over here. So these villagers now sitting idly to get back to work here. Let's check out Rappel's economy. 12 villagers on food, 8 on wood, 3 on gold. Yeah, they're all idle. They're all idle. The Chimera comes back over here. There is the Frost Giant though from Rappel. That's going to be a dead. Uh, that's going to be a dead Chimera. Oh, Matrius notices it. Nice play from uh, from Matrius. Good play from Rappel to defend that one there with the Frost Giant. But one thing that now uh, now Matrius might want to do is send his Apollo up there and uh, and have the Frost Giant get picked. Oh, or you can just run around the other side. A little bit of ring around the rosy. There's so many low HP villagers here. Oh, oh, he doesn't, oh, he doesn't do it. He's, he's, he's too scared. The Frost Giant comes back. Fair enough. Fair enough. Too scared. Now, now Rappel's at 146 of 180 population. We are going to be seeing matches changing the path of battle. Obviously, if he can get onto this town center before he starts taking damage, it's a lot better than the other uh, than the other way. And Rappel has been outmaneuvered here in this game uh, as the Heliopoli come over here. This town center is going to fall very, very fast. And Rappel, he's, he's pushed over 160 population now. Uh, the Chimera coming in onto this position to help out. But those throwing axemen, they, they tickle the Heliopoli at 6.3 hack damage a second. It's better than the... Uh, Better than the alternative of having like Toxodes against Siege, but nonetheless, the town center goes down and Matrius is going to be able to continue in this game very, very nicely here. It's really Rappel needs to start that fishing ship shenanigans back up again, but he hasn't. We're going to see another Trireme raid as this uh, as this game continues. The dock getting, uh, not the dock, the, the longhouse getting taken down over here. Another Chimera Cape coming in. Rappel has gotten to 160 or 160 population. He's going to try and get some hill forts down. 
But like, like it takes a while to get the baluster set up. This is why you either have to play to the baluster. It's not like something you can rely and set back into. You need to like play towards it or or do something else, basically. As the uh, Chimera says, yeah, I get it. I, I know where to go. I know where to go. I know that your fire giant, your frost giant's not here anymore. As uh, Matrius is moving in here. Villager's about to get roasted. Uh, I mean, four villager kills. Not bad. Not bad. We've seen more. It's better when you send three Chimera in to roast some villagers, but... Looks like all these villagers... Are, there's another one coming in. Oh, it's, it's so brutal. Oh, cuts that. Cuts that nicely there. Right, look at this. 15, 16, 17, 18. The double, the double roast on one side and on the other. Over here. Hit this. Hit this. Ah, oh, so sad. So sad. It was going to be huge, but it, was, it just wasn't enough. Hillfort's trying to get thrown up by Rappel. He's, he's losing villages left, right, and center, but he is rebuilding them quickly. Longhouse is coming up everywhere. Maybe starting a trade route wouldn't be a bad idea. All the villages getting picked off over here as, as Rappel's at 120, 118, 160. He keeps falling. His villager population is falling incredibly fast here. As, uh, as Matrius just cleans up that, those villages absolutely brutally there. And Match is just too good uh, at this at, at this stage of the game. We see the towns that are getting taken down here, or, or trying to get taken down. As Rappel is sacrificing all these villages, as this as this one is looking very very difficult for Rappel. He's out of gold over here. The Chimera have taken all that down. This gold line getting grabbed, no problems there. Matrius is just too strong here. I don't see what else Rappel can do. He's lost too many villages. He's got no gold income. Rappel, he's got some resources in the bank. He could sell food, I guess. <laughs> we see the Argo! The Argo rose in. 11.2 damage per second. It's pretty, pretty bonkers. It's a bonkers ship. It costs a lot of resources. 250 wood, 8 favor. Yo. The Argo's in. The town center trying to come up for matches, trying to get up to three town centers here. Fortress wants to get dropped down on this location here. So the Chimera is going to swing back over here to help defend against this push that's coming in. Matrius sitting at 104 of 140 population, still struggling. Matrius' economy is just as a struggle town as Rapples. As Rapple just about to finish up this gold mine though. And losing that gold mine means there's no gold left for him. Like he has to come over here. So I guess... This fortress isn't something to care about because you can just finish off the gold before it's up. <laughs> the Argo's just doing some... <laughs> when you see your opponent makes the Argo, you know you've lost. Absolutely true. We see some units now coming over here. Going to take a peek at this gold mine. There's this one just... It's going to... Yeah, the gold is finished. The gold is finished before the fortress gets up. Sad state for Matches. He thought he was... He was thought he was doing something smart, but really, he should put the fortress over here. Still chances for Rappel. There's absolutely still chances for Rappel here. He's at three town centers. He's going to leave this fortress. He's going to move over here. Jump onto this gold mine. Matches has only got himself 834 gold in the bank. This game is very, very close. Finally, I thought this game was completely lost, but Rappel is like hanging in by a thread here. All he's got to do is hold this gold mine, and he's actually going to be able to win here because he's gonna—it's just going to be enough of a boost to his economy over what his opponent has that, like, he's not like Matches just doesn't have the gold here. He's going to try and get his—he's going to try and get his uh his gold sorted. Rappel's out of gold here. Try and push in over here. There is still this frost giant just about dead. Forty-two HP. He's very, very close here. He needs to wait for that special, though, to pick off the, the Chimeras. The Chimeras are going to be getting some good damage done. Throwing Axemen. A little bit of a misclick there. That was at 1 foot 15, 110 population of Matrius. Matrius at 136, so Rappel just doesn't have the pop to hold this gold mine. He gets it, but Matrius has still got plenty of gold in the bank at this point. The villagers moving over here trying to share the gold mine for the time being, but the Chimera comes through, and that's going to be some dead villagers getting burnt here as everyone fighting over that final gold mine. It's like Matrius is, is a little bit too far in front. He's got the Heliopoli out. The Plotimus is out. The Theseus is out. This Chimera is going to town. We are seeing the Frost Giant trying to catch up over here, but will not be able to. All the villages of Rappel 
getting taken down. Rappel still not starting that trade route that he had started the market, but no no trade route attempt here. As Iago is just literally killing all the fishing ship. How much population does it cost? It's only three populations. That's not bad. I thought it was four. That's not bad. That's actually a worthwhile unit to build. Funnily enough, it's not even troll. It's actually not even troll. That's the Heliopolite. Come in to finish off the Frost Giant here nicely. Rapple. No gold remaining in the bank. 32 gold. Four villages on food. 19 on wood. Decides to tap out as Matrius does hold on here for the dub. What an insane game here. Both players playing ridiculously well. I would have liked to see maybe Rappel go less units in the classical age instead of trying to put some light raids on, just go straight to the heroic age and maybe grab the back town center first instead of that forward one because that slowed Rappel down more than you might think. There was lots of other things that Rappel could have done better just in terms of like APM reactions, raids himself. He didn't really attempt to uh, touch this uh, this food with Yorman Elvis, which I think is a mistake. But in, in terms of just like straight strategy, this town center here instead of this one first would have made a lot more sense, a lot safer. You can uh, you can be completely fine there, and then you can grab this town center a little bit later. But he didn't go for it. He got a little bit pressured. He did survive, but he had to use Frost. And using Frost then means he couldn't use Frost on this fight that you really wanted to do. When he was here with the Ulf Suck and the Hypaspis behind, Frost that, pick off all those villages, get all those Hypaspis in idle state, and then you're going to be in a much better spot. But match is so, so insane. So tough to beat. What a good player. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.